playing poorly on oh. main tank, especially against uh, against players that are so strong like Shriek. He's been on the roll for a very long time. God just is kind of looking at him going, you know, I know that feel. I'm all about that. I life. know that feel. God's, of course, uh, probably one of the most notorious uh, swappers of roles in Overwatch history and making it work. But speaking of swapping roles, you take a look at this Montreal defense. God's getting back to his roots here on Hitscan DPS. God's on the Tracer. So Montreal, they're playing a form of the bunker where instead of focusing a lot on the peel, they have two, they have the Sombra and the Tracer because they're worried that second win will try to contest the point. It makes it a lot easier to not only contest the point, but also get early poke in the end. Roger's going to be hanging out here on top on the Bastion. Certainly a hurdle that second wind is going to have to try and get through the halt. Setting up Logics all the while, and while you have Logics in position, God's just freelancing right now, looking to be a pest at the back. And right now, God's is just looking to clean up on anyone that's hurt. Also, rotate to the point if need be. He's getting real close to getting the DMEC right now. Barbecue in a rough spot. DMEC going to come through. On the same note, Logics is down. They've dealt with the Bastion. However, nothing falling here that like Gods can potentially keep up the pressure. Looks for Halo, gonna finish him off. The Tracer play, do not adjust your set. This is for real. This is for real. Gods gonna have to drop that recall. Zando getting the frag onto Naga. Sending the Nano as well, making sure that he's still alive. Oh! Ezire cleaning up. This is a real chance here for them to actually finish up. The spawns are much better for second win. Start moving forward. Nano boost Batiste. Moving in. He's there, he's had enough, gonna use the blade, moving on forward. I don't think the blade was super necessary here, but he's there, wasn't sure of that moving in. It's still gonna be second wind game, point A, pretty quickly, a minute and a half, not something to feel bad about. Definitely not, I, I, the real question is, will second wind stay on this setup? Will they continue to run the Genji? Will they continue to run the Sombra? Because Montreal, I imagine he will be making swaps, maybe not too many since Naga will have the EMP and Gods has that pulse bomb as well. So we're actually gonna be sticking on it, setting up here, committing to their ults. Technique gonna cancel kick back. Pulse bomb in from Gods connects! Bye bye, Ezar. No uh, Genji on the field. I'm curious to see if Gods actually stays on this for a longer period of time. I mean, given that we're back on point B, it makes sense if Montreal were to swap things over, but for now, they're committing to the T Spunker. And right now, you see Technique just getting this pressure, trying to build the EMP, having to recall, having to back up. And Naga, he has the EMP as well. He's a counter EMP. Tenta has the Valkyrie. There isn't a lot of defensive ults available. So Goliath is going to be relied upon here to keep him alive. You see, they're getting ready to set up. Technique waiting for it. Use the EMP here at any moment for now. Just hanging on. You know, these are able to get one, but heat ends down in turn. The problem is here for a second wind is that if you're not super decisive, it's going to be very hard for a DPS setup to actually get progress on the point. So both teams still holding on to their EMPs technique, trying to set up. There's a lot of time on the bank for second win. Still getting ready to go. I wouldn't be surprised either. Halo needs to, be, needs to make sure to also not get caught by the EMP. He needs to be hiding, setting it up. Naga was sitting there trying to camp, but was not able to catch up technique. Both teams just poking and poking and poking. Nanoblade, EMP getting ready to come up. EMP gonna be setting the stage here. Pile driver straight on in, second win being aggressive, and it's working out pretty well. They lose two in the process, but Montreal certainly staggered here. Many players off the point, it's already gonna be one tick to second win. Montreal, though, they have the ability to potentially come back out and stall, so even as two ticks are in here, will they be able to keep them off the point? And yeah, they're gonna be able to do it. No sun search here for Montreal. The Nano, I mean, not that they didn't even have to use Nano Blade realistically. They just set up with the EMP. Were able to follow up in time. The, the immortality field for Goliath keeping up for a while, but the focus fire too strong. And the problem that was with Montreal's comp is that as soon as Gods, as, or not Gods, as soon as Sharik and Logics are pretty much out of the fight, how do you win post fight? How do you survive? How do you contest point when Sahe Win owns it? Because there is no real, there's no tanky heroes left. There is no sustain. You don't have a transcendence. You don't have a beat. You have nothing with which to follow up. You can't even contest the backline. It's all, all on Naga and Gods. And despite the EMP getting two, Second Wind had too much point control, had too many frags, and Montreal could not contest the point effectively. It's just a little bit weird to me that Montreal decided to stay on the defense for a second, where I understand why you'd use it on first, but for second, there's such a defensive advantage if you just play a more standard setup, particularly in terms of alt economy, respawn, advantage, and so forth, that running that comp there just seemed to make things easier for second wind especially given the fact that they're already running a sombra setup that had a reasonable ability to break a bunker comp on point b really i think they overvalued their ults 
I think they overvalued your ults. They had amplification matrix. They had the window. They had bongo. They had EMP. If anything, the only ult you really want to keep in that setup is the EMP, I think. If you're going to be playing with the bongo, then you can't play that defensively. In fact, if anything, I want you to try to set up with the bongo, initiate with the bongo in the fight, use it early. Because if you allow Technique to get EMP off, which is exactly what happened, they just lose. They just lose. They have no point presence. Well, we're going to be swapping sides here. It's going to be Montreal on the attack. And they're still not going to be going with the normal 3-3 setup here. They are going to be going with the Barra Sombra. So you really do have to look towards logics here and how quickly he's going to be able to build up EMP. These second win, making these rotations. Trying to make sure to contest Naga. Don't give them any entry. Logix is going to get out of that invis. And God swapping onto the Hanzo as well, which means more spam for Montreal. Their goal, spam the shield, force the rotation, and have Sharik and Logix be the ones to pressure the point. And also just look for gaps when someone isn't behind the shield. It's just a moment, or a moment of negligence can lead to a Hanzo. Getting in early picked off in these sorts of situations. Pile driver can be moving in. Montreal, again, right in the face of second win. Second win, back up a bit, but second win giving up a good amount of ground here as Montreal starts moving on in, pressuring point a bit more. These are gonna dampen the mood here just a bit. Finds Naga and gives second win something to work off. As long as they can deny the res, they do as well. Tinsa going down. Izar getting three so far in this fight. Just moving forward, continuing to look for frags. Frederick Glass on the high Make it four. four. He's about to get five. five. Needs That's one more five. shot. Gonna get it. And this is the explosive power of Ash. I'm not even talking about the dynamite, just the raw damage you can put out when given a clean sight line and no shield in your way. See right now, just continuing to pressure Sharik as well. Gonna go into space. Currently on fire from the dynamite. Logix is 80% to the EMP, and will be a really strong initiation. It's not just EMP Barrage, but actually EMP Mines here will be great, considering there is very limited mobility for second win. Dead destruction coming in here, but you know what helps with that? Bob. Bob can be on the point, and Shriek doesn't really want to mess with that. It's something that Montreal, they're going to wait to invest. And all the while, Logic's down, Naga down. I wonder if Montreal goes for a swap. I think they'll wait for the EMP, and if that doesn't work, they go to the Goats of Shame, which is that you goats, you lose all your alts, and you have only about a minute left. And what this fight is going to be so, it, what's so important for second win moving into this fight is they know EMP is up, they should know Barrage is up, and then Goliath gets caught with the halt with the damage moving forward. This doesn't even leave them time to go Goats of Shame towards end. Uh, okay, they won't have the res, but it still burns off an extra 15, maybe 20 seconds for the setup. Montreal, their entire plan here is based around the EMP, and Hidan has to get a good immortality kill. Gods, already strike it a bit towards the back. Pile driver gonna open things up. EMP invested. Second wind. No real response. Ends up killing two. Even before the fall through comes with the barrage, which hasn't even had it out yet. The mines do all the work that's necessary. Montreal should be able to roll in and take this point, but perhaps a few other plans. They get a bit more in contest, but it should not be enough. Montreal. Great spot now to get point A. That's what I talked about earlier is the EMP mines are actually fantastic when there is no cooldowns available to get you out of it and you're just stuck after being ground pounded up, getting that smashed up into the mines. It got so much value there. Second win are going to be losing first though. Making these swaps now for last. So they're not going to make the same mistake Montreal did. They had ults, but they're going to commit. They're going to swap. I imagine Montreal will swap and turn go through three or maybe Sombra goes. I think Sombra goes to be good here and. Okay, Naga is not going to commit the terrible error of going, hey, Barrage is good, I just should stand far for that. No, the H key, stronger than the Q key. Especially when Ana's on the field. Oh, Ana just has that sleep, has that ability to extra contest Farah. Second win, swapping to Zin in return. Goliath does have Trance. So in terms of ult strength, Montreal's ult strength is much better since Goliath does have that Trance up and Hidan does not. Well, if anything, if they commit barbecue, he's gonna have to get a great zoning uh, bomb here. Well, the bomb is going to come in over the top. He's going to be shielded off. Now Transcends has to move in. He's going to save Shariq. Shariq getting so incredibly low. Goliath getting in there just in the nick of time. One tick going away of Montreal Rebellion here. Barbecue going to be just melted out of the mech. And Shariq's shield is getting low, but he decides it's time to go in. Takes down his counterpart. But Montreal, it's going to be a slower time here. Might be still pretty competitive. A second win. They're having real struggles trying to get on some point to contest. The Shadow's going to be coming in. The Transcendence very late, not built up anywhere near in time. So this should be Montreal getting through point B. Should be Montreal. Dan, in the back line though, actually able to find Goliath. He wins the Zen duel. Unlikely that it's going to make much of a difference though. Izar has the grab, but look at all this health. Look at the shield still up. They're on point. Counter grab, catching technique. 
and this should be cap. Yeah, that second win credit for buying as much time as they did towards the very end, but not enough. Still gives them a time bank advantage. The problem is for Assault is that this is with the margin that I don't really think there's a huge edge to either team. And certainly Montreal with one good early attack here could pretty much shift the course of this map where, you know, never forget, it's Montreal up 2 to nothing right now. The pressure not really on them. Second wind fighting to avoid elimination. They must win Horizon or at least draw or that will be the end of their season and Montreal will advance. Not just having a good offense here for Montreal, but just learning from their defense too would drastically improve their chances of taking the map. They made a critical mistake on their first defense of just overvaluing the bunker comp ults, not using them aggressively enough to where the EMP is still out on the field, not swapping. So Montreal, obviously, I think we'll be learning some lessons. They're going to be in the offense here again. And their offense did not seem to be the problem. I mean, it wasn't blazingly fast, but it was still very quick. No, the problem with Montreal was definitely the defense where they, I would say, overinvested in the Batiste bunker, where I think it was fine on point A, but point B, a lot more questionable. And as we take a look at the compositions here, it doesn't really seem like Montreal saw any issue with their early attack. They're going to be running out with the same composition here, just hoping that they find something good a bit sooner this time. If anything, this comp this is even better for them because they're running out on the comp that they used to break first on their last offense. They don't need to make any swaps. They don't have to worry about yeah. that. They already know their strategy. So it's going to be a very similar approach. Get the spam, force the rotation, force point until you get the EMP, until so you get a keep deck. You're going to be under a bit of pressure here early on for now, just hiding behind. The Batiste can drop the Immortality Field at any point. Ezar, though, the one they need to dive and deal with. Ezar was the heart of the defense, even more so than the Bastion the last time around. So second win. Forced to rotate to the point based off some boops from Naga. You see Montreal, they're slowly but surely circling, taking the high ground, trying to split. Second win here. Shriek went in, immediately went out. About halfway to getting mine, so still not a bad spot. Second win, though, doing a good job of rotating around, keeping the bunker fairly mobile as they leverage Ezire and the Bastion here. They make Montreal uh, just a little bit hesitant to dive on in. Look at Logic as the EMP, by the way. 85%. Halo close to the Amplification Matrix. Oh, the Halo was almost matrix down. is not great in countering yeah. EMP. It really isn't. Halo took an arrow there, and he's lucky it didn't finish him off. He just need a little bit more charge. EMP is up, though. Logic's going to set the stage, and gods there on the immediate follow through. Montreal in a good spot. You lose Shriek, but... Still winnable here for Montreal, depending how the rest of this pans out. Real this is actually very, very winnable yeah, for second win. Shariq down means there's no point presence available for Montreal. Their EMP should have been their fight win, but without Shariq, they can't sit on point. They also have no shields, so it's a problem where Naga, this is a risky barrage. High risk, high reward, could get immediately bopped. Has to be aware of Hedan, but well timed to be devastating here. Ticks could be their way, and they're gonna use the dragon right down the middle. Forces a big rotation on a second win, and even the amplification matrix, not enough. The arrow gonna strike deeply. Naga going to the barrage, working around the left hand side. Hoping to get in on the Bastion. And does feel comfortable moving in. Bob gonna be coming on out, and second wind on the verge to bring this back. Right now, Goliath died. He was not able to get that transcendence off in time. Montreal, they're still contesting. They need to get these frags, but Izar, he's flanked. He's on high ground. He's actually denying so much space. It's a perfect ass positioning here where you have good sight lines. Nothing is in your way. Montreal getting forced back. And Montreal, they're down to their final minute here. Down to the final minute. They will have the EMP barrage combo up very soon. And second one are doing a very, very good job of also contesting the point continuously, surviving, using the immortality field to make sure they're not dropping picks. Montreal are going to have to poke here once again. You see the high ground controlled by second win. And the dynamite gets Goliath on the entry. These are just doing so much on the Ash. Montreal, the response has not been great. They will have one more good attempt with the EMP. Double support all in tow. But it all comes down to logics. It has set this up. EMP in. Naga immediately going for the Barrage. And this time, it's a combo they're looking for. Two immediately removed from the fight. And I don't think Second Wind is coming back from this one. No, there's no way that Second Wind will be able to win this fight. They're not going to commit any more ults. God's going to make the frag. See, the fight is still happening. Halo, he should not be able to get this dragon. He won't. And that will be first for Montreal. They had to invest a lot of time, had to invest the EMP. I think they're going to make a, a, maybe a desperation swap. No, they're going to commit the triple DPS and hope their ults are good enough. Well, they were able to save both support ults, so they're in a decent spot. They're not going to have the EMP. It's Dragon Strike. So much value here is going to rest on God splitting them with Dragon Strike and Shariq getting mines. 
to zone. So much value. So no second wind is. They don't have to rush the attack. Give me overtime no matter what. And the dragon from behind, super sneaky, deals with the Bastion immediately. Technique out of the fight, Shriek diving on in right after. Mines aren't out. Still very winnable here. Flantra class down! Flyeth doesn't get the chance to use Transcendence. Burst it out. And Ezire, just an iron wall. Both on point A and also at the very end. Goliath not able to pop Trance during that offense. Didn't pop it. I don't think he popped it once. No. I don't think the Trance was used at all. He saved it forever and you don't unfortunately, get to carry it over. Yeah, no, you don't get to bring it to the next round. It's gone. And you notice also how Second Wind, despite the fact that they committed to the bunker comp here, as soon as the Dragon Strike comes out, they rotate and they use Bongo. Phil uses the Bongo because if you don't use it then, you probably won't be able to use it as the fight goes on because you're just going to lose the spam war. You're just going to lose that poke war. And the bongo allows you to not only zone, but potentially win that spam war. Ready for battle. Supercharger definitely having an impact, but now we swap sides. And bear in mind, for Montreal, they did not get any progress on point B. So their only hope of completing the sweep here is having a full hold on point A for four and a half minutes. And frankly, this defense of theirs, while interesting... Did not work out last no, time. No, does not strike me as a hold for four and a half minutes on point A defense. Especially since second win, just to get the draw, even if they don't win the, the map, they can still continue the series with the draw. All they have to do is build up toward the EMP, build up toward the Nano Blade. They have win conditions here, especially if they run a similar comp to what they did on that first offense for them. I think Montreal, they're certainly going to be playing for the draw here. I don't think they have any delusions about getting the point A hold. I mean, it's possible, it's not super likely. So the odds that we're seeing at least a map four in the series, pretty likely at this point, I'd say. Z Technique is on the Sombra. Ezar on the Genji. Be very much relying on those double win conditions. The anti's out. Can he but can God get Ezar? I don't think he's going to commit to it. Oh, he will commit to it, actually. He gets it. Goes in. Gets a cleanup. That was set up by Goliath on the other side. I mean, who knows? Maybe Goliath does put on just a tremendous performance here, but they have to be perfect. Nari technique, like a bit of pressure in the point, and chasing after Sombra's Tracer could be dangerous. It can be risky. Yeah. It can be very risky. Montreal denying the first push for right now. Just getting the poke, but he Dan. Nano is already available. However, they don't really have any ults to combo with. I, I wouldn't be surprised for them to still to see it to use, maybe just to build. That's a sleep. Oh. Well, and there's a follow through. That's going to delay things quite a bit. Still in a reasonable spot here. They're committing. The Nano's out. Dan, he gets the frag. They're going for the res. They are able to get the res, I think. No, they, yes, they are. The tank warms out. This is very, very good for Montreal. They can still contest here. And Logic's going to start rolling around here. The tank going to pick up one. Looking for a little bit more. Naga in trouble. And the tank for Logic's very much doing its job here. Now, even though it feels like it's been a while, Still three minutes left here at the point. Nano boost gonna be used on Logic. It's time to go back to the turbo. Looks to mow down Diva. Gonna do just that. On the other side, Logic's making the Bastion work. Pick off after pick off, going the way of Montreal. Now, second win, they've invested a lot of time. They still have plenty, though, for first. No Nano available for Goliath either. So there are no defensibles. There are currently zero defensibles. Well, it's gonna be coming up on this EMP blade for second win and the mines. What's gonna be realistically their only hope is. Well, that'll do it if they get the pick really early on the Sombra. No Sombra on the fight, no EMP in the fight. Two and a half minutes left for second win here. It's been a better defense already for Montreal compared to the last round. Still not super likely they hold for two and a half minutes, but they've been making believers at me here so far. It's been a lot better for God. This is the fight, though. This is second win's fight with this EMP with the Blade. Gonna be ready very soon The mines, too. I think Naga wants to use this preemptively. Deny the Blade, deny Sombra if possible. The EMP's gonna be coming in first for second win. Already they use it to put Logic straight into the dumpster. These are just dashing back and forth. Second win, they want the map four, they want to short here. And they're gonna do just that if they're able to get point A. As they just slice through Montreal defense, so. Second win, just need a little bit more. And they should be able to get what they need. They should, there, there's no contest available for Montreal. So now Montreal gonna give up first. They don't they, they don't have any ult kids. They have no fight wins though for a second win. They have nothing. They I imagine they're just gonna make a full swap. That's what I would expect here, but we have confirmed it is going to be a map four no matter what after this. Second wind, of course, as they look for the reverse sweep. They would very much like to get a point on the board here and not just go, well, horizon never happened. 
look at this second one actually going to the Symmetra strategy here. They have Frill onto the Arista technique on the Bastion again, the moving castle. Bear in mind, they only need 33% to pick up the map win here. We're gonna castle v castle. Bastions in play on both sides. A bit of turn defense, I suppose. Now second win, gonna take the fight to the point. Montreal, you must respond. Teleporter yeah. gonna be coming out here. Same with the Maywall, pure pandemonium, but that's gonna be it! Montreal Man, doesn't punch. get the point and second win. They take Horizon and they take one step closer to potentially making this reverse sweep. And what a story that would be. I, I actually really like the swap onto the moving castle strat for last because they've already guaranteed the draw. They can't lose the map. And you have Bongo still. You have ults available. You have Nano. You have Beat coming up. You have so much sustain. But the moving castle means you can move back and forward. You can set up your bash in a very good strat in a very good position. You have the nano to keep them alive. The ball goes to enable them even further. Pretty interesting choice to go for last. You don't see that too often, especially when the other team goes 3 3. But it's innovative, and I really like to see that innovation come out. The other thing I'd want to see here more as well from Second Wind is that Montreal, even though they've looked good in a lot of respects, they don't look very good against Bunker Comp. No. They look very disorganized on it. It's not a comp that they're very comfortable in dealing with. So. I'm taking notes of second win going, hey, if we don't normally run it on most maps, I think you try and run it regardless as you head to the next map because if that's going to be the response from Montreal, it's a different team. It is. It, they're having a lot of trouble finding success against it. They, they're they able to eventually win an offense where they can build up their ults in time. They can spam, set up the EMP, engage. But against, you know, when they're on defense or even when they don't have those fight winning ults available, they're not able to break it effectively. They're not able to give the pressure, the force rotations that they need. No, not quite, but we're going to be moving into our next map. It is map four. Escort going to be on the table here. And, of course, it is a team pick, so it's not Sandstone. This is going to be the pick of Montreal Rebellion and where they'll want to bring things. And they're going to want to bring things over to Rialto. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. It's a 3-3 three, three map. They know they want to fight 3-3. Three, three. They know they're much more effective on 3-3, three, three, or at least they feel they are. So they're going to take it to Rialto. It's a lot harder to run bunker comps on Rialto. It's not impossible. We have seen it come out previously. You can get with it a little bit on point A, I would say. But it, but it is else. still not the most effective strategy at most points. Uh, or at least it's much harder to run. It, it's not anywhere near the power of an assault map, where assault maps, of course, is just... It, it really is the best area to run a bunker comp, especially if you get to play on Paris, where bunker comp is crazy powerful. And now we'll least. see... Uh, we'll also see which side that second wind will pick, because... The loser picks map, the winner picks side. They pick offense or defense first. They're getting ready to roll out into here. And right now it is, the scoreline is currently two for Montreal. One for second win. So there's a possibility for the reverse sweep. It's there. The second win shows some signs of life, especially with their bunker compositions or when they're able to put Izar onto the Genji. Izar is actually known for being a, a very known, a well-known Genji player. Well, Izar really projectile DPS in general, whether it be Genji, Farah or otherwise, I don't think that the meta has been super kind to him in making him go on Brigida often when he was in that role. I think it's already been better for him that he's been able to swap to Zarya and play that in terms of where, where his strengths actually lie. But yeah, I mean, if he can run a Genji and actually make it work, uh, it's better look for him overall for to be sure. But again, the Rialto gate's going to be opening up here in just a moment. And we'll see just what both teams are running. And second win... For better or for worse here, as they head out here in the defense, they're not going to be heading in on A4 Bunker Comp. They're going to be fighting this to the end on 3-3. Rialto is the sort of the poster child for 3-3 next to King's Row, though. It is. If not, even better, potentially, due to the fact that you the rotations are so easy and so fast on this map, along with the chokes being so severe with environmental hazards, that 3-3 is just so incredibly strong. Also, 3-3 three, three is very, very good defense when you get to that first cho or first bend on point B. Not only is it good on point A, of course, but that bend on point B, usually what deciding a lot of maps here. But now, gonna be getting into it. Montreal on the attack, and second win, giving them a fairly wide berth. Montreal running the counter DP here. Zin v Zin, is he second win back up towards the corner? They're not gonna take this extremely aggressive hold as you, as you see a lot of people do often. Montreal taking the high ground, gonna drop, gonna look to probably do the pincer maneuver we see often where the majority of the team falls, high ground, then the D.Va moves cart, and here comes the engage. I think gonna be happening here from second wind. Montreal holding back, Shriek in a rough spot here, but Goliath gonna get first pick up, Frill falling, 
Greek able to grit it out. And the one-man advance turns into a snowball here for Montreal. And this is a very good omen as you try and get through point A. That bash was so good on the fill as well. Naga just made sure the shield wasn't up. The Discord was on him. He was getting deleted by Goliath. There will be a recontest potentially available for Second Wind. But look how close this card is. Look at the positioning for Montreal. They want to deny it entirely. I don't think Second Wind are going to go for the contest at all. Uh, going for the recontest here would be a very, very poor idea. I think the amount of ult you'd be giving up, the likelihood of losing the fight, and of course, the fact that you would have a low chance of success, it all adds up to a bad idea. You know, knowing the fold of And they do. Ancient proverb. Ancient proverb <laughs> there. Very wise wisdom. Logix also already has that grab for Izar. They're going to likely look to set it up. They need to know, though, that Hidan has the Transcendence. They should be tracking it very well, so Valley probably going to come out and try to look to force that. Valley's up. They're looking forward. Frill under a lot of pressure here, and even as Frill is under pressure, Montreal turns her pressure onto Technique. They take him on down, and Montreal is just flexing here with ultimates to make this fight very easy. The charge not getting much there for Frill. He's going to be moved into the into the canals there afterwards. So exactly what happened, they did use the rally to force the transcendence, so not Logic's grab actually still came out before. They win the fight though, it was a much better setup, much better damage. The Dan does not have the transcendence anymore. And second wind are gonna look at set up the combo of their own. And this is really important for Montreal. Off the pressure momentum they've had, they've gone through the second minute. Oh, what a pick off! Technique down early, self-destruct, hang right to the back. Doesn't quite connect the way they want, but with the early pick off, they've gone through one of the toughest points here on Rialto very, very quickly. That is a huge boon to Montreal in a blazingly quick time so far. Not only have they got through extremely quickly from that pickoff from Logix, Logix is going to have grab again so soon. He's about to lap Izar. Well, not really lap because Izar still technically has the grab, but lapping them in that he has two when he has already has one. And Izar just hasn't had a good time to use the grab. Early pickoffs have been just destroying second win on morale alone. Now the rally's gonna be in Logix. Closely grab, as mentioned, and just take it down. Was freelance a little bit more to the flank, punished for it in turn. Grab can be best here by second win. They used the beat just to pile on, so they're gonna get a victory on this fight, but it comes at a dear cost. Logics was too quick in the team there. It was still good overall because they had to they had second win to commit various ults. They committed grab, they committed grab, they committed beat, all good. But Logic was too split. He was holding so aggressively there, looking for his charge. He will have grab for next fight though. So this should be very, very good for Montreal. Even if the grab just forces the transcendence, Montreal's overall sustain, their support ult will be much better. Logix, of course, uh, in all the freelance he was doing, he does pick up grab for this fight. In Montreal, I mean, they can take the time to agree. I mean, they have plenty of time left in reserve. They're gonna move in with Rally. Oh, they have an opportunity to get Frill. Frill's in a really tough spot. Frill under pressure, gonna fall. Easy pick off here from Montreal. All they had to use was Rally to set it up. And they just snowball it from there. Second win falling one by one. And Heenan can't use the Transcendence fight. It was too late. That engage was so good for Montreal, just pulling for old second wind, was just waiting for any ults. They were desperately trying to get any ults committed there. Montreal did not invest anything because that's a rally. Logic still have to grab. And they might get this before second wind gets back to point. Second wind in a tough spot. They do get the contest off, but again, coming out of a tough spot. Already forcing D-Max self-destruct pretty early. Earth Shatter gonna be coming in. Barbecue not being able to get back into fight. Six on five now. And Shariq moving in with the cleanup. Graviton not gonna be doing a whole lot. The self-destruct not even necessary. And Montreal setting a blindingly fast time here in Rialto. And second win season could be coming to a close here because even if they finish the map, the time bank difference enormous right now. This is uh, some old Logic's gameplay I'm witnessing. This, this grab build, this pressure that he's putting out, been phenomenal so far in Rialto. Even having that unfortunate feat, I guess it would almost describe it as a feat or just two being far too aggressive on that push previous. It was fine because they could trade out so many ults for that aggression. It was a fight where second wind, as you say, they had to use a lot of ults, but also on top of that, it was also a good engage to just get Logix out of there to begin with, where up until that point, Logix wasn't getting punished for being that far out. So I don't really blame Logix for being that greedy there because if the other team's not going to punish you for being a mile away and just building ult, we have to why not keep doing it? So right now, Second win gonna be on this offense, Montreal on the defense. And you see they're getting ready to get set up. Second win probably gonna be running on the 3-3 still, Montreal as well. Montreal feels very, very confident on the 3-3. Shriek and Gods have been pretty 
stand out on the rolls. Logic's also when he's popping off, getting that support. So much value from him. So, final opportunity here for second wind. Not only do they need to finish out the map, but they need to do it in a close time to Montreal if they really want to have any hope of getting the reverse sweep. They've taken one step, but they have so many more yet to take within the series. Montreal, of course, looking forward to potentially getting into that semi-final matchup. Fusion University tomorrow. Like when moving forward here, Montreal, are they going to hold aggressively? It looks like they're not. They're going to back up towards the corner here as well, just getting this energy using the bubbles. Allow Logics to have some good poke. Second one moving forward. I imagine second one will make a very similar rotation that most teams do. Move the majority of your team high ground. Leave your Diva on cart. Do that pincer move. Barbecue actually having to rotate because Montreal know that's what their play is and looking to pressure him. Second one, they're going to fully go up to the high ground, still leaving one on payload. Again, just looking for poke between both teams. These are outbuilding Logics to a fair degree here so far. Could pay dividends. This fight goes a little bit further and he then. Flying pressure here, for Catches sure. Goliath. Yeah, he got Goliath. Early pick. Yeah. That's a huge, winning the Zen duel. This should be free injury for second win if they just play it slow. But on the other side, you can see Shariq fall in second win, able to equalize and then some. A better pick off on the other end. You know Montreal's gonna be able to get back to contest. It's gonna be very tough position. It will be tough position, especially with Hidan having that confidence already up, available. And more importantly, Izar has grabbed. Well, they do get back to test and meter 50 left barbecue. Very right, pressure, but he's higher. As you say, get a drop to grab early, forcing the line to transcend and turn. The self destruct with barbecue connects directly to the back. Second win, doing enough to get a very quick point A. So we said that second win need to come through in speed run, and right now it's looking like they might be doing just that. That pick was so important from Hidan. Anytime you can win the Zin duel, get the right click across the map in 3 3, where you have barriers, bubbles, armor packs. With the Discord gone, with the healing gone, it just opens up the entirety of the fight. And they just had a much better... They were able to team at Gods as well, so Izar knew he had a free grab. And they set it up perfectly there at the choke. That's the fight win. But they did have to commit their combo, which means Montreal can effectively move forward and know they will have a free grab. In turn, they don't have to worry about a grab from Izar. You can see Technique use Rally. Both teams, in fact, trading out Rally. Shadow be coming out here early from second win. Not amounting to much. Shriek, the Shatter in reserve. Now, be a little more aggressive on Ryan. Doesn't have to worry about the counter Shatter. Round time coming in for Shriek. Going off to the side, looking for the charge to break things up. And as he goes for that, it's still five on five. But oh, there's the Shatter Shriek was looking for. Knocks three to the ground. And Montreal, they're going to put a stop to momentum. That second win is trying to build up here. That is really just the value of having the, sh the grab up. The enemy team does it. They put it perfectly on the corner. Shariq is able to get the charge out, turn around when there's no Ryan on the field, put up a good shatter. Second win, they're looking to move back in. They have the combo up, but with no support ults. They need to be really worried about the zoning grab for gods. Gods are not only going to be looking to eat, obviously, but there is a strong position where if they play the geography right, gods can zone this very, very well. Deny it a charge coming out for Krill. Oh, gods decides to use bomb here should be interesting, where again, he's a diva that's more than willing to look for bombs, not set up by a grab. Early barrier gonna be best here by Montreal, moving forward. Quinn actually in a tough spot. They used the grab under pressure, but they're already down one. And the bomb. Montreal using a lot of pressure out of Logics, and it's a very, very good fight for them. Shriek's positioning there was so aggressive, actually playing split from his team, playing up on the arch, up on the bridge. And second one tried to commit on him, and when they did that, they used a lot of cooldowns, and they forced the beat early for Tinsa. Tinsa keeping him alive using the LOS. And because of that, their their grab, their setup, was so split, was not very good. No, not in the least. And more importantly here, Gods is able to save Bomb in that fight. Barbecue used this pretty early. And now they have grab Bomb set up, and this is the hard part about Rialto. Getting through this area of point B is really hard if you don't have momentum from the last point. I really like that play, that last fight from Montreal, just using Shriek's aggressive positioning to just set up a much worse grab for Izar. Now second win, moving here in from the Archer, trying to move him from high ground, but they can't. The boot comes out for Halo, but Montreal can just walk back up here, and they have combo. Yeah, the combo is what they're going to be looking for. They have a lot of ways to set it up. They're still maintaining control on top. They can dive in, they can hold back. They have all have options. Second win, it's very tough to engage from the position that they're in right now. Second win, they're just in the poke war. They're really trying to build a beat. They need so something. Low. They need ults. But look he at this. Down. He gets down. He didn't want to pop the trance. He was under uh, pressure. And he got caught by a rare fire strike on the other side. 
Now, Transistor be used here from Montreal in response to the Earth Shatter. I don't think they really need to use it there. But off the Transcend, they just dive in the second wind. They buy more time and second wind. Potentially only a minute 45 left in their season. Second wind. They're a whole goal for this next fight is setting up combo. That is that is their life. They The rally's great to get them in. They can't set up the Shatter because there is no Shatter for Frill. For he invested in that last fight. Did force the trance. So with the trance being gone, there is no trance for Goliath. This is second wind's time to set up their combo, move it perfectly. They need to remove bubbles. So important for them. They need to remove bubbles and maybe put a little bit of early shield pressure on their Shriek. I mean, the biggest thing, as you say, it, it goes down to Ysire and the Graviton. In fact, Goliath does have transcendence. Graviton can be used here early. It's an awkward position. We'll see the fall through there. They have one already. Halo out of them. Gods, the counter bomb! Shuts it all down. Montreal still in a very, very good spot. The bomb, of course, set up by Logix and his grab, and that could be it. Very well might have been second win season going bye-bye there, because the next fight is going to be very, very difficult for them. No, I don't know if Ezar, that was just a missed grab there, maybe he was booped, because it was in a position where Frill could not follow up at all. I think it was also just Logix hitting a great healing grab, with healing grab recognizing where when an enemy team puts out grab, you know they set up a combo. You put out your own grab to deny the follow-up. And Logix kept them on the other side of the doorway. They could not set up the combo effectively. Final 30 seconds, a trip to fight Fusion Uni in the semifinals at stake. Second win. Hoping for this bomb to do some work. It does not. The Shatter in from Shriek puts Frill on the ground. Frill, potentially out of it. He's gonna be gone. Reinhardt advantage in the Montreal. They do lose Goliath. He's about to have Transcendence. Not gonna be available in this fight. Second win making this a little bit interesting here. But Montreal can end them here and now, final three seconds. They can wait. I mean, Goliath is coming back from spawn with the Transcendence. Logic almost has this grab. There is nothing, there's nothing available. Barbecue's not even in mech. It's a free grab. Free grab is available. Goliath is back. The Graviton can be invested. And here comes Montreal diving in right after it. Logic's is grab. It's done the deed. Second win. You performed Admiral Bleaks. You formed the new roster. But in the end, Montreal the able to take you down here and now. They're going to get their date with Fusion University tomorrow, the semifinals. Very good showing for Montreal. I mean, a great showing for second win. Yeah. We talked about it previously. Yeah, they've, this The tank line for Montreal right now, Shriek and Gods, was from second win. The rest of second win roster has been you know, scattered about the wins as well, gone to various teams been poached. You know, they've gone to academy teams that need the slots filled. They were a great performing. They were a well-performing team. And they built a whole new roster from scratch, essentially. Halo, really the only original member. And they made it to playoffs. And they put up a, a really, I think, a pretty solid performance against Montreal there. I think, really, there's something here that both teams can walk away happy for. Montreal, obviously, as an academy team, you don't want face relegation. They got in the playoffs. They upgraded their team with players from second wind. And, I mean, they are well-performing academy team. So, kudos to them for making the necessary upgrades. On the other side, for second wind, obviously, it's tough to have your players taken in the middle of the season. But they bounced back in a way that I don't think a whole lot of teams would. I mean, they've outperformed teams that didn't have to deal with that level of player poaching, so to speak. So for a second win, they've been one of the more notable orgs in the contender scene for a while. They've been fantastic at training up new talent. And, you know, they are going to have to lick their wounds for a little bit, but they're guaranteed into season two of contenders this year. And I really do expect them to come back even stronger. And he's right now here is our updated playoff bracket for the semis. Obviously, we're not done for today, but for the semis for tomorrow, we are going to have Mayhem Legion, Fusion Uni Montreal. And I think Montreal have to feel just ecstatic <laughs> when they were on the edge, the very edge of being eliminated from playoffs not too long ago. I think for Montreal, it's a phenomenal turnaround, right? Where you go from potential complete despair, where if you do get eliminated that early, you know, usually it's a bloodbath on the management side. That's where you see coaches and analysts uh, go to Twitter and go, LFT. Well, we've already seen it for Uprising Academy. Yeah. Because they were rele they are going to be relegated. And we did see the post saying LFT. So for Montreal and the staff involved there, it is a sigh of relief that they were able to turn things around and do as well as they've done here. And, I mean, really, you look at the matches tomorrow. Mamb Academy, Gliders, Legion, Fusion Uni, Montreal. These are going to be some good games. They are. They're going to be fantastic. May Mayhem Academy, I think, is just a team that's a treat to watch. Fusion Uni, obviously, the juggernaut of contenders. We'd love to see them against the new and improved Montreal roster. So, what more can you say? It's been a good day of playoffs here so far. And guess what? We still got two more matches. We're going to NA West after this. And the matches that are coming up. We expect them to be pretty close.